If you're watching this on YouTube, you might have noticed that this episode is a week delayed. But if you want to get early access to our episodes, consider becoming a paying member. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you for all your support. The Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science, now part of the Centre for Inquiry, stands for scientific truth at a time when objective truth is not universally appreciated. The fact of evolution is one of science's most important truths and has long been under threat in American education. One of the best things my foundation ever did was to recruit Bertha Vasquez and sponsor her Teacher Institute for Evolutionary Science, TIES. She's a brilliant science teacher and TIES enables her to encourage other teachers in the challenging art of teaching evolution in the face of religious opposition. Even better, she's now taken on a full-time job as our Director of Education. We both attended the 2023 SICON meeting in Las Vegas, strongly recommended by the way, please come next year. On the last day of the conference, I wanted to interview Bertha for The Poetry of Reality. Fortuitously, and extremely fortunately, we discovered that Anthony Tresic King was also at the conference, and he agreed to film us using no fewer than four cameras. If you enjoy the result and appreciate what Bertha is doing, please consider donating to the Richard Dawkins Foundation to enable her to continue, along with other things that we do to encourage scientific rationality. Go to richarddawkins.net and hit donate. Bertha, this is a great pleasure. It's, I think, exactly 10 years since we first met. Yes. And I have memories of that. Do you, do you have a memory of that? Absolutely, I have a memory of that. You were a, a itinerant professor at the University of Miami. Oh, yeah. And my students wrote you a lovely letter thanking you for the wonderful book, The Ancestor's Tale, because I use that a lot in my classroom. You invited me to sit with the professors at lunch, and uh, we had a lovely conversation about teaching evolution in American schools. I think I remember some, one of those teachers told an anecdote about how a pupil in her class had complained. Correct. And um, she was hauled up before the principal, I think. Well, it was a private school in Miami-Dade County, and the principal of that private school, because of that one complaint, decided that the teacher could no longer teach evolution in the classroom. That would not happen in a public school. They have to teach evolution. Yes. Well, that's good to hear. Um, now, soon after that, you became associated with the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason yes. and Science. To yes. Do, and, and was that the point where TIES was invented? Tell us yes. about that. Yes. So I saw you again the following year. You were visiting Miami promoting a play on Spinoza. Oh, yes. And I told you that I went back to my classroom with some ideas after our conversation about teaching evolution, and I decided to help other teachers. That's the first time I said, you know, maybe I need to help other teachers teach this subject. Give them content, give them confidence, give them passion about the subject. And I told you about that. And you said, can I come and speak to these teachers? And that was very forward of me. Yes, I was mm -hmm. thrilled. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Miami-Dade County Public Schools uh, district supervisors decided to open your talk to all the science teachers in the school district. You came to my school auditorium, and we had over 100 teachers and my students, and we just talked evolution, took questions, and, and that's when you said to me, would you do this for me nationally? I said that? Yes. Well, that was very forward of me, too. Yes. Um, and so w that was the birth of ties. That then. was the birth of ties, and then Robin Blumner and I um, got together. We had our first ties workshop at the Frost Science Museum in Miami, Florida, in collaboration with the Frost. Ties, the, the Teacher Institute for Evolutionary, evolutionary yeah. Science. That's where we decided the name. Robin Blumner and I said, Teacher Institute for Evolutionary Studies, Teacher Institute for Evolutionary Science, and we, we decided upon science, and it, that's how Ties was born. 2015 was our first workshop. And tell us about the story since then. Well, what I loved is that you, you and both Robin had confidence in me and said, do it your way. And I know, I think as a teacher, I retired after 35 years in the classroom just last June, I think I knew what teachers needed, and I think I knew what teachers wanted. They wanted free resources, easy to use, very comprehensive, and I, want, I think they wanted to be respected. 
I understood that they knew pedagogy, that they understood what they were doing. I just wanted to give them the resources and the content to do it. Okay, so give us a picture of, of what a typical workshop would be like. A typical workshop, um, we bring up the website, which is called tieseducation.org, and I give them an overview, and I say, uh, that here are all the resources. They're organized by category, say natural selection, evidence for evolution, um, geological time. And then I tend to focus on a few resources. I let the teachers try them out. So we might try an, 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 investigate, an investigation on natural selection, where they're the finches, Peter and oh, Rosemary wonderful. Grant's wonderful. finches. Okay. Yep. Uh, we have some online games. I let them try that. Mm -hmm. We attack misconceptions, because a lot of teachers still have misconceptions. So, for example, the idea that that ladder of progress where the yeah. chimp looks like Lucy, looks like a, yeah. we eliminate that misconception by discussing how evolution's more like a tree, not like a ladder. And there's several great games to do that with. Um, so we model the classroom lessons. We talk about the discomfort some teachers feel teaching the topic, what they can expect the questions or the discomfort the kids may have, how to handle that in a respectful manner. Um, well, respect for what kind of thing? That you're talking about a pupil turning his face to the wall and not listening. Yes, yes. that kind of thing. Why or do saying, you show respect for that? Oh, because they're kids. Okay. And I, I think kindness is always the best way to go. And, um, well, you're, you're more kind than I am. <laughs> yes. So, for example, one of the things we start with is there's a wonderful thing we do. It's on the page, a resource page called Fact or Fiction. And you give them a, a column that says fact at the top and a column that says fiction at the top. And they have these little statements. Evolution is just a theory. If humans evolved from monkeys. Um, they're all f fiction. But you'll notice that the teachers put them in the wrong place. And I say, okay, we all have misconceptions on this topic. Start your class like this. We all have misunderstandings about evolution. So let's enter this topic with an open mind. Let's learn together. Uh, stuff like that just to make the kids more comfortable okay. with the topic. What, what do you say about the only a theory point? Um, because they don't know what the word theory means. Yeah. Or, or I should say the word theory is used differently in the classroom and science yes. as opposed to out there in a detective show on TV. So the teacher needs to explain what a scientific theory yes. is versus a detective novel yes. theory. Yes. I have a slightly heretical view on this, which is, I mean, of course you're right, but I think it's so embedded in our culture that theory means unsubstantiated hypothesis that we should stop, we should say, no, it, it's a fact. Forget, right. the, forget theory altogether. It is a fact. Right. Just like the fact that the, that the Earth orbits the sun. Right, the heliocentric theory. I always yeah. tell the kids, do you want your doctor to wash his hands or her hands before they operate on you? Yes. Why? That's just a theory. Yes. Right? It's the germ <laughs> yeah, exactly. theory of yeah, good disease. One, yeah. um, I like to say it's a theory about the fact of evolution by natural selection. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, how many states have you had... Uh, workshops in now? 50! Uh, all 50. We started well with done. just one in Miami. Um, I remember Robin Blumner saying to me, wait till you get a workshop in every state. And I thought, oh, this lady's crazy. I, there's no way I'm getting a workshop in every state. Three years later, 2018, our last state, I believe, was Hawaii or Alaska. And that was, we've had more than one in every state at this point. Right. And we have 80 presenters. So if the teachers that you're teaching are your academic children, they're pupils, they're your academic grandchildren. Exactly. Yes. And we could do the ancestors tale right there. We could yes. go back thousands <laughs> yes. of years. Yes. I just, I think, I know my kids come out of my class loving evolution and biology more than they come out loving rocks and the property of waves. Why? Because I know the content better. So my, my goal with Ties is give teachers the content and, and, and then they'll teach it with more passion, with more confidence, with, with more enthusiasm. Right. And do they have to face opposition from religious, religiously brought up children in their classes? Yes. And, yes, and absolutely. You, you kind of coach them in how to handle that? Yes. Yes, we do. Um, one of the ways is to use 
for example, we have a bell ringer about, it's a true story about my dog, and then I tell them to put their dog or their cat where I bought flea medicine for my dog, and it stopped working. And why did it stop working? Now, the kids who take genetics first can tell you that the fleas must have had a mutation that made them resistant to the medicine, and they spread through the population as the sensitive fleas died. If you start with something like that, and the kids go home, and, well, what did you learn about, I like how you say evolution, like evil. If, if, if you go home with something like that, the parents say, oh, well, yeah, that, that's true. We had to get new flea medicine for jinx. So that softens the blow, that kind of thing. Of course, the, the creationists are happy with that because they just say that's micro. Microevolution, yes. which is a word I had to look up when I started yes, the, yes. this program because I didn't know there, there was a distinction It's a rather creation. pernicious distinction. It, it's not a real distinction, I think. Yes. It's, it's okay. Now, I do use, once we get into macroevolution, I often use in the workshops and also in class your idea of going back a thousand years. Oh, yes. And that opens people's eyes a little bit too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, you recently retired as a, as a teacher in order to take on a, a wonderful new responsibility. Tell us about that. Yes. So I retired from the classroom last June. I'm still, it's still very strange to me to not be going to work every morning. And I want to expand ties, of course, but we now have two other programs under our yeah. umbrella. What, what's your new job called? I am the Director of Education for the Center for Inquiry. Great. Yes, okay. And um, tell us about the, what, eyes, what lies under that umbrella. Well, we have ties, which yes. is humming along very nicely now. Yes. Um, which you're still running? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I just met with two teachers who are presenting. So I have a lot of different presenters. I just met with somebody in Arizona and somebody in North Carolina. And I, we send them the resources. We, I work very closely with each presenter. Ties is, is doing well. We wrote a book a couple years ago yes. on teaching evolution. You wrote the foreword for that. Thank you. And now we have two other programs under the umbrella. One is called Science Saves, where I love it. It's just a very positive program. What we want to do is promote science appreciation. Now this was, is this the brainchild of Todd Stiefel? If I Correct. That? Yes. Correct. The idea is those of us lucky enough to be born in the 20th and 21st centuries, we forget how wonderful it is that half our children are not dead before the age of five, that we have clean water, that we have sewage systems, that we have air conditioning and electric lights. And so it's a program to promote that understanding, that appreciate, the awareness, which is so easily forgotten in our, our very uh, science-improved lives. Yes. The trick is, we don't want to give teachers something else to teach. They're burdened enough. What I do is I create lessons about science appreciation covering the standards that the teachers already have to teach anyway. That's how you get that kind of yeah. thing in the classroom. Yes. Science doesn't only save, it, it, since they're saving the body, it, it also opens the mind. Yes. And, and it, it's wonderful. The, I mean, this, this um, uh, podcast YouTube channel is called the poetry of reality. Science mm -hmm. is the poetry of reality. That's another important aspect, I think, of, yes. of science. I think we want kids to understand that science is a mixture of curiosity and awe. Yes. That's what I always try to promote. Very good, yes. And the third part of your responsibility? The third part was Center for Inquiry's original education program. It was called Young Skeptics. It, is, it was relaunched in August as Generation Skeptics. And this is promoting uh, skeptical thinking. So I think teachers do a wonderful job of helping kids arrive at answers on their own. We don't just open the book to page 80 anymore and copy the definitions. But the kids know that what the, the stuff they're being taught is real. So you don't say anymore, this is reflection versus refraction. You say, here's a flashlight, here's a prism, figure it out. But they know that reflection and refraction is real. How do we address the misinformation that students are now receiving, all of us are receiving, yes. via social media yes. and the news? How do you make children more skeptical yes. of, for, you know, when they receive information? 
And that's what skeptical G generation skeptics is about. Yes. Well, we are meeting on the last day of SICON, the the annual conference of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I, I think it's been a very good conference. It's I'm, been it, fantastic. Yes. I, I keep buying the books of every speaker. I'm going home a little heavier than I came. Yes. Um, wh what sort of stood out for you? I liked Rena Raphael's presentation on the the. the the issue of the wellness industry. Oh yes. And now uh, there, it's stressful to just be healthy and all of these things that we're, all this self-care that we're supposed to be yes. doing. And so I bought her book yes. and I can't wait to be in touch with her and I think we can come up with some really good lessons because yeah. kids are bombarded by uh, all of these products yes. that are supposed to make them feel better. I think it's been an excellent conference, as, yes. as last year's was as well. And I would, I would encourage everybody to yes. come along to this conference. It was fun. Next Your year. conversation it's with Bill Nye was. Yes, all every, every about year science. I have to present something called the Richard Dawkins Award to somebody. And last year it was Neil deGrasse Tyson. This mm -hmm. year it's, it's been Bill Nye. And it's been wonderful having Bill here mm -hmm. um, at, at the conference. He means a lot to. I told him on behalf of every elementary and middle school science teacher in this country and in Canada, thank you. Your, your videos meant I could sit down for 23 minutes and you could teach my class for me. And uh, it was a real thrill well, to I meet him. Well, I think he'd be up against some pretty stiff competition with, with you. Both. Oh, I don't know. He's pretty um, amazing. What do you hope to achieve in the next years in your new job? That's a great idea. For Science Saves, I, I want people to kids to take care of to take advantage of our scholarship we're offering fifteen thousand dollars a year in cash and scholarships if students high school students create videos how science has improved my life or the life of someone i know i'd like to see more states adopt national science appreciation day which is march 26 and i believe it happens to be my birthday yes, yes. natural national science appreciation day that is yes. fantastic and i don't think that was Planned. Oh, I hope not. I no, know, I it's the day so. yeah. in 1953 that Jonas Salk announced the yes. successful polio vaccine yes. trials. Yeah. So you can go on sciencesaves.org and sign a petition for your state to s create a proclamation and make March 26, Richard Dawkins' birthday, Science <laughs> Appreciation Day. And for generation skeptics, I envision summer camps where kids come and and learn and in a very entertaining way how to be skeptics i envision high school clubs middle school clubs and even college campus clubs of generation skeptics which i like to call gen skeps clubs right that's where i want to take this right. well the center for inquiry is the umbrella organization that we both uh, work with mm -hmm. and um, the education department is now in your hands and I think they're in the very very good hands indeed so thank Bertha, you thank you very much indeed. thank you that that meeting in 2013 and 2014 those were auspicious meetings I think we've made a difference together in this country so thank you for giving me this opportunity many, many thanks if you enjoyed this episode you can show some support by subscribing to the podcast sharing it with your friends and leaving a review